when you're an entrepreneur and you put everything on the line, it is really, really hard when something like COVID comes. When you look at this university and the difficult last couple of years that everyone's had, everyone has had ups and downs. But I want you to know that you are not defined by your circumstances, nor the seasons of your country, nor the seasons of the world. I actually really believe in the potential of India more than you actually think. And I want you to know I'm not saying it just because I'm speaking in your country. I actually believe that capitalism in America is actually closing right now. We are fighting for capitalism in America. The winds have changed in the West. I want you to know that. And I want you to know to dream even bigger. If you need to go to the West and you feel like going to the West, go for it. But I'm going to tell you right now, you want to know the most exciting economies in the world right now? India and Sub-Saharan Africa. When you look at India and Sub-Saharan Africa, the most incredible opportunities are coming to your country. Yes, Hyderabad is known as the center hub of technology and engineering and all these things. It's amazing. It really is. It's the Silicon Valley of the West. We know the amazing successes, but that's just one industry. That's just one industry. Was I correct on that sentence? Is that what the sound was? Do you have the photo of me and my wife? No? No. Yes or no? Sorry, I don't understand. Yes or no? Yes, we do. Thank you. I want to show you, when you look at your country, India, everyone say, dream big. Now say it like you mean it. Say, dream big. Yeah. Have you heard of a small company called Toyota? Yes? Have you heard of a company called Google? Have you heard of a company called Apple? You want to know how it all started? It started with someone with a vision. And I want you to know that I never thought, that's terrible resolution stretch like that. That's ridiculous, but that's fine. When you look on social media, you can take it down. Me and my wife, we met in Texas, Dallas in 20, uh, we met in 2010. And it was love at first sight. <laughs> oh, the boys like that one more than the girls. That was interesting. And so I looked at her. She looked at me and I couldn't feel my legs. It was love at first sight. And did you get that? You can laugh at that. I couldn't feel my legs. Did you get that one? And we, we met and it was amazing. Um, and we, there it is. There she is. This is Kane. She's half Japanese, half Mexican. We call that Japsican. And uh, when I met her, it was amazing. I, I really never thought as a child that I would ever get married. I never thought that I would be able to, you know, really be a good enough husband. And I see all these husbands and I'm looking at them holding their wife's hand. And I thought, I can't even hold my wife's hand. How am I going to hold my wife's hand? And I can't hold my wife's hand, but today I hold her heart. And you don't need arms for that. And you women can have dignity and you can have absolute uh, equal opportunities here in a country like this. I want you to know that I respect my wife equal to me. I respect my wife as my best friend. And I want you to know that, that dreams come true. And if I got married to such an incredible woman, if that's what your goal is to get married, that's beautiful. Go for that dream. I'll tell you, though, one thing. Ready? Can I tell you just one piece of advice? If you think that you're going to be happier married and you don't think you're happy single, just make sure you talk to someone married. Because I'll tell you right now, if you're not happy single, you're not going to be happy married. Does that make sense? I'll tell you right now. 
I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's the same thing of why we think we need something or someone else. Now go for it. Get married. Am I happier married? Yes, I am. But I was happy before I got married because I knew the truth of my value. I knew the truth of my purpose. I knew the truth that whether I am rich or poor, married or not, barren or with children, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we feel ashamed if we cannot provide a child to our family. That doesn't make you any less of a human being. There are many children out there who need a parent. Me and my, my wife, here's the next photo. We have now four children. And we have Kiyoshi, who's nine now. Dayan, who's seven. These are old photos, but Kiyoshi's on the left. Dayan's on the right. He's now seven. And the babies. We have twin identical girls. And they're now five years old. Five years old. And they're taller than me now. I'm the shortest man in the house. And I, and I want you to know that I never thought that I would ever have children. And here we are. We conceived biological children. And it's amazing. My son, Kiyoshi. He actually, thank you for the photos, you can take it down. Thank you. Kiyoshi, he told me last year, he said, Daddy, I said, what's wrong? He looked sad. He said, Daddy, I wish you had arms. I said, why, honey? He said, because I wish I could feel your hug. And I was like, ah. and I'm like trying not to cry. And he says, but don't worry, Daddy. I said, why, baby? He said, because I'm strong. And so I'm going to hug you stronger and longer. You've heard that saying, right? The glass is either half empty or half full. What does that mean? It's your attitude. It's your choice. Now, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be okay. We all go through ups and downs. But even when your life is not good, my parents always told me, Nick, don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. You were not given arms and legs, but you were given a brain. Use your brain. Do your best. I mean, that was strict. I went to the store and I said, Mom and Dad, can I have that toy? And you know what they said? No. And I'm like, why not? They're like, get your own money. I was six years old. And they said, figure it out. Can you say those words, figure it out? Come on, say it stronger, figure it out. You just got to figure it out. And so I'm going home and I'm like, well, how can I make money? And my parents said, well, figure it out. Do something around the house and then we'll pay you. And I'm like, okay. So my brother, he's taking out the trash, right? Right, that when we were a little older, he did more of that. But when I was six, seven years old, I picked up the vacuum cleaner in my own home. And I picked it up with my shoulder and my chin. And I would vacuum the floor, vacuum the floor. For what? For $2 a week. And what did I want from the store? I just wanted some little matchbox car. You know what I mean? It wasn't a matchbox small car. It was a larger car. It was $15. So I knew at that time I had to work eight weeks to get that toy. It was the greatest thing. Listen to me very carefully. It was the greatest thing that my parents did not give me what I wanted, when I wanted it, how I wanted it. You want to know why? Because that will ill prepare me for the world, I'm going to tell you the truth. The world will not give you what you want, when you want, or how you want it. That's life. That's life. And those people who don't get what they want, when they want it, how they want it, guess what they're forced to do? Figure it out. And they choose the right attitude to look at their life and say, okay, I have no arms and no legs, or I have a little foot. 
And I love my little foot. I know you like cricket, but us Europeans, we love soccer. And I want you to know I love soccer. And I was playing soccer one day and I hurt my foot so bad I couldn't walk for three weeks. And I realized at that point, you know what? I can do something and I do have something. And I realized as I was saving $2 a week, it gave me dignity. It taught me, what's wrong? No cutting away. Come on, that's distracting. So sorry. Thank you. <laughs>